everyone. Well, here we are at week nine, and what a journey it's been. Each week, Alora and I have designed our blocks, and then we get to see your versions made in your fabrics and your colours. So thanks again for being part of this course. This is our second last video for this course. Next week is going to be The Borders. But this won't be our last course. We've had so much fun filming Twilight Dreaming that we're already planning our next course and we'll definitely keep you involved. So this week's block is our little wolf pup. He's our Twilight Dreamer and all of the blocks are snapshots from his dream. This week's technique, we're going to do some pinwheel blocks which we're going to make into our flowers and we're also going to show you how you can do some sketchy applique on the caterpillar. To get started on block 9, make the pinwheel flowers first. To make the pinwheel flowers, you'll need to choose two colours and from each colour, cut four two and a half inch squares. Onto the wrong side of one of your coloured fabric squares, mark a diagonal line from corner to corner. So this is going on to the wrong side and we're going to mark that diagonal line onto all of, say for instance, the blue ones. I'm just using um, one of my ceramic pencils. It looks a bit like a lead pencil. You could actually use a lead pencil for this or your fabric marker that you like to use. Next step is we're going to put one of our blue squares right sides together with one of our pink squares like that. And then we're going to head over to the machine to start sewing. Now to prepare your machine, just in the usual way, we're going to use the quarter inch foot, a neutral colored thread and a stitch length of two. So we're going to sew a quarter of an inch either side of the marked line. So if you've got your quarter inch foot on, it's just a matter of lining your guide up with the line that we've marked. Starting with long threads, And we're going to do the chaining method again. So cut the squares apart and then we're going to sew on the other side of the line. step is to cut them in half with your rotary cutter and a ruler. Cutting on the marked line. Once you've cut them apart, open up and you'll see that you have got a half square triangle. Now we're going to press all of the seams towards the darkest colour. Once you've finished pressing, next step is to trim away the corners on each square. and then arrange your little squares into the shape of pinwheels. Just a matter sometimes of spinning around until you get your little triangles facing in the right direction. Whoop, not that one. There we go. <laughs> Got it. So there we go. So now we're going to sew the squares together. We're just going to put them right sides together like that. And then we're going to head over to the sewing machine to sew them together. We're sewing them together in pairs. Make sure that you've got them arranged the right way because it is kind of easy to spin them in the wrong direction. And otherwise you'll have to do a little bit of unpicking. The other thing I just wanted to um, make mention of is that you'll see that when you put them together, because we've pressed the seams in opposite directions, that's just going to, those two squares will just link in nicely together. So once again, we're just sewing them with our quarter inch seam allowance. 
And chaining along too. going to do is you're going to press the seam in one direction this time on our top section and then our piece that goes together we're going to press that seam in the opposite direction that's so that we're going to reduce the bulk and they're going to sew together nicely like that seams in opposite directions now we're going to sew the middle seam You can actually use a pin to pin that centre seam together if you want to. I find that it just tends to link in together. And just be careful as you're sewing over the bulk of the middle seam. and there's our pinwheel block but it is a bit bulky in the center there so we're going to just flip it over and we're going to press that middle seam open just to reduce the bulk so that's our pinwheel blocks you can make these in um, all different sizes and you can imagine if you join them together it'd make a really lovely quilt but what we're going to do with our pinwheel blocks we're going to cut them into circles so tracing the circle shape from our design placement sheet there and then we've also got another little circle that you can trace from the um, applique shapes and we're just going to iron our circle onto the wrong side of our pinwheel block just centering that and then we're going to cut that out cutting neatly on the line And there's our pinwheel flower so the next step from there would be now that you've got your pinwheel flowers made just in the same way that we do every week you're going to print out your pattern sheets tape your design placement together and then trace that onto your background fabric apply your applique shapes stitch around the edge of your applique shapes and then you can put your little pinwheel flower on and include the little center flower what I did with these flowers was I just did my little zigzag around the edge. I did a zigzag around the um, center circle also. If you're doing your blanket stitch, then you would just do your blanket stitch. Next step, once all of your applique is complete, it's just a matter of making your quilt sandwich with your three layers and then doing all of the quilting, just like we have every week. Now, if you wanted to do some sketchy applique onto the little caterpillar there, just leave that till last. So it can be ironed on, it can be ironed in place, but do all of your quilting. And then what we're going to do is do the sketchy applique around the edge. If you don't want to do the sketchy applique, you would just blanket stitch or zigzag around the edge. And then the little lines in between the circles, you could just stitch those in just with a little straight stitch and just a little straight stitch on the legs there. But I'm going to head over to the sewing machine and get threaded up and ready to do the sketchy applique. So what I'm doing to the caterpillar is I'm just adding some little oval shapes onto the body. Just like that, just so that it just gives me a little bit of an idea of where I'm actually going to stitch. And then the next thing I'm going to do is thread my machine up with a color. I'm using an embroidery thread and it's just a little bit of a darker color than the caterpillar. I've got my um, free motion foot on and I've dropped the feed dogs and I've also loosened the top tension a little bit. So most machines your normal tension is four. I've gone down to a three and every time before I do some free motion stitching I like to do a little bit of a practice. That's my little up and downs there so I'll just do that again and that just um, is a good opportunity to be able to check my tension. So just bringing my bobbin thread up to the top like that and I'm just going to do a couple of stitches and snip off the threads and then I'm just going to stitch backwards and forwards. 
notice that I'm not going incredibly fast. It's just about being able to have the machine going at a nice speed and your hands going at a nice slow pace. That looks quite good. And then I'm just going to check my tension. So that's quite good. If, say, for instance, I had some of the bobbin thread coming to the top, I would just loosen off the top tension a little bit more. If I had um, a lot of thread of the top thread coming to the back, then I would actually have to tighten up the top tension. But somewhere around three should be about right. So I'm going to start on the caterpillar and I'm going to start where um, a circle connects to another circle. So about there. So usual thing, I'm going to just drop my foot and then I'm going to bring my bobbin thread up to the top. Always handy to use tweezers if you've got a thread cutter on your machine. And then I'm just going to start with a couple of little stitches just to get it caught. And then trim those threads. Then I'm going to make my hand frame. And the way I'm going to do this is I'm going to sew each circle and it's actually quite easy to sew little circles. And I'm going to sew each circle two or three times and then I'm going to move on to the next circle in kind of like a figure eight. I might just do another round and then I'm moving on to my next circle like that. So I'm going to go one, two, and then moving on to my next circle. One, two, you can see when you get to the top it's like you're going three times. Feel like you need a rest and reposition your hands. Stop in the middle of a circle where it's about to connect onto your next circle. And then away we go again. stop again for a minute and just say that you don't have to make sure that this is perfect like this is sketchy applique so and it's free it's free motion um, you can see that what I'm doing is when I first sew uh, my little circle I aim to sew you know just a little bit away from the edge um, and as I said your circles don't all have to be on top of each other So I'm going to stop there because now I'm going to come back and do some little legs. So I'm just coming along the body and then just some little up, down, backwards and forwards there just to make some little tiny legs on the caterpillar. So just stop when you feel that you need to have a little rest and reposition your hands. Also do some little antennas too. And just say stopping somewhere about there. So one of the things about sketchy applique is if you are a little bit worried because you've tried doing free motion work, sometimes we get a little bit scared with free motion work because we're not quite sure where to go next. You know, we're working in a large area. Sketchy applique, you're just working in a tiny little area, just in your hand frame, and it really is quite easy to manage. So that's block nine. We hope you enjoyed this lesson. If you want to, you can trim up the bottom three blocks and join them together with the rest of your quilt and um, have it ready for next week's lesson, which is going to be the borders. Bye now.